Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This uh, study today is going to be more along the lines of what they call apologetics. Now, people hear that word apologetics and they're thinking, oh, okay, somebody's apologizing. Now, in the, uh, if I remember correctly, apologetics comes from the Greek word and it has reference to give an answer to. So, the Bible records, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, so, apologetics comes from 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And be always ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And that is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. That's, that's the uh, reason of hope. So to give an answer is what they call apologetics. Well, we are going to take a look at Luke. No, I'm sorry, not Luke. Uh, the book of Judges. And uh, let's see. Let me take a look here real quick. Now, after Moses died, Joshua took over. And then after Joshua died, um, there were people that the Lord would send to deliver Israel from the hands of their enemies. And if you listen to modern preachers today, they'll say, well, you know, God loves everybody. And we don't have enemies. We just have uh, potential saved people. You know, all we got to do is tell them about the love of Jesus. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that Israel has enemies. And of course, if you think it's that Antichrist over in the Middle East, well, you've got a problem. But let's go to Judges chapter 2, verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Balaam, um, false satanic heathen god, right? And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. You know, Ashtaroth is just a uh, another name for Easter. Yeah, Easter. Yeah, you know the Easter bunny and, uh, you know, Easter egg hunts, yeah. Uh, Easter is a proper name. It's a noun. It's the name of the spring goddess of fertility. If I remember correctly, she is the possibly the wife of Baal. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not an expert on all these different names. So, but uh, Ashtaroth, not a good thing. So they forsook the Lord and they served the devil and the devils. Verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. What happens if you leave uh, food outside in the hot sun? It goes it gets spoiled, right? It's no good. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies but god loves everybody uh i don't think so and he sold them into the hands of their enemies roundabout so that they could no longer stand before their enemies 
whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. The hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring, a whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. So here it is, it's a cycle. Uh, the people, the enemies of Israel, they would oppress them, and the people would repent and follow the Lord. The Lord would have pity on them, deliver them from the enemies. Uh, the, you know, Israel would get fat and happy and forget all about the Lord. And then the Lord would do, bring the enemies again for judgment. I mean, that's what happened with the Assyrians to northern Israel. That's what happened to Judah and Jerusalem with the Babylonians. I mean, it's just a cycle until the final, I guess you could say the final act of the play. You know, like this is a movie theater, right? And the Lord is, uh, well, let's just say the final act will be when uh, the Lord lets Satan have pretty much control of everything. The beast, the false prophet, and the, um, the dragon. The unholy trinity for the end times. Well, you can read about it in the book of Revelation. But uh, that is how the book of Judges played out. Now, have you ever heard of Deborah? She was a judge and a prophetess, and she delivered Israel out of the hands of their enemies. Samson, he was another judge. Um... I think Gideon, too, if I remember correctly. Perhaps you've heard of some of these people. Yeah. So. All right. Judges chapter 3, verse 5. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and the Perizzites, or is it the Parasites? and Hivites and Jebusites. Uh, by the way, Esau, who was Edom, married Hittite woman. Two of them, actually. So, the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hittites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Verse 6. And they took their daughters to be their wives. I'm telling you people, the Canaanites were satanic human hybrids from the fallen angels there's a reason why the lord said don't marry these people so and they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods and the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord and forget the lord their god and served balaam and the groves Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan-Rishathiam, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served uh, Cushan, whatever, eight years. They were basically the slaves, right? Now, what was the state of uh, Israel in this time? Well, judges... 17 and verse 6. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So, in other words, they didn't keep the Ten Commandments. If they felt like 
doing something, they did it. You know, they did that which was right in his own eyes. So, hey, I, you know, I want to steal my neighbor's land and his house. I'll just kill him and take it. They did that which was right in their own eyes. So, with that in mind, let's go to Judges 19. Now, the reason I was talking about apologetics is the story we're about to get into. A lot of people who don't understand the holiness of the Lord just absolutely don't get the story. And they'll actually say, oh, well, the Bible's evil because of what's getting ready to happen. Well, I'm sorry. Before we go to uh, Judges 19, I want to skip around in Leviticus chapter 21. Now, Leviticus is the training book for the Levite priests. Levi was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. They were set aside for service to the Lord. Them and them alone were to serve in the tabernacle and eventually the temple. That was their job, period. Serve the Lord. And the Lord is a holy God, and he wanted his people, his servants, to be holy. So, I'm getting you ready to read uh, Judges 19, but before we do, I want you to understand this. So, let's see. Leviticus 21, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, now, Moses and Aaron were both Levites. They were brothers. Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. Uh, so I'm kind of guessing here, uh, doing anything with, uh, you know, the dead people, whether it be helping bury them or, uh, I don't know, maybe burial services, saying the last, what the Catholics call last rites or whatever. I don't know. Verse 2, But for his kin that is near unto him, that is for his mother and for his father or for his son or his, for his daughter or for his brother, and for his sister, a virgin that is nigh unto him, which hath had no husband, for her may he be defiled. So they weren't supposed to handle dead bodies unless they were family. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. Verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. And what do people... Uh, particularly women, uh, they say they want to commit suicide and they, you know, slit their wrists, you know, not to make any cuttings in their flesh. Uh, earrings, nose piercings, belly button piercings. Uh, some even put piercings down there if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, tattoos, you know, I mean, the Levites, verse 6, they shall be holy, they, the Levites, shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God for the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore, um, they shall be holy. Listen carefully. This is why I'm reading this. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. Yeah, stay away from those loose women. They're trouble. I was an expert when I was a kid. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband. Uh, we don't want a divorcee. For he is holy unto his God. Um, 
Thou shalt sanctify him, therefore, for he offered the bread of, of thy God. He shall be holy unto thee, for I, the Lord, which sanctify you, am holy. You know, the book of Leviticus is a book that absolutely stresses the holiness of God. I mean, compared to the sinful flesh, oh boy. Nine. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. So she dishonored the family. Verse 10. And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, you know, the holy garments, the temple garments, to go into the Holy of Holies once a year with blood. And he that is consecrated to put on the garments shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. Neither shall he go into any dead body nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. Uh, this is for the high priest. Neither, let's see, verse 12. We're getting close. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God, for the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. Now listen to this, a high priest. And 13, and he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow, or a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot, these shall he not, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. So the Lord wanted the high priest to have a virgin for a wife. Very important. Not a widow. Not a divorced woman, or a profane, or a whore, a harlot. So, keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to Judges 19. Judges 19, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite, Ah, here's a guy of the tribe of Levi, the priest tribe. They, you know, the holy, the, the tribe of the whole, the, they were supposed to be holy to serve the Lord. That there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, what's, a, what's, a, what's a concubine? Well... A concubine is sort of kind of like a second wife. Sort of kind of like a second wife. Uh, Mormons would probably understand, but hey, I'm not a Mormon. So here's the punchline, number uh, verse two. And his concubine played the whore against him. Ah, the concubine played the whore against him. Now, Maybe this concubine was a young woman with a high, uh, I should have made a disclosure here. Uh, this is not really going to be a child-friendly study. This is not a child-friendly study. Uh, probably for a young teen or, you know, a teenager, probably okay. But for a young child, no. Um, uh, if the child knows the difference between a boy and a girl, it's probably okay. But, you know, a teenager. I, I wouldn't want to give this to somebody 13. But So keep that in mind. This is not going to be child-friendly. It's kind of adult-oriented. And his concubine played the whore against the Levite, okay? And went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, 
and was there four whole months. So here it is, the Levite's supposed to have a virgin, but this girl goes out and plays a whore. Now, we don't know anything other than he was a Levite and she was his concubine and she was whoring around on him. Whether with one other guy or with a series of guys, we don't know. Now, a lot of times uh, a woman would be a concubine or a wife to a man. You know, they like a man that's a little older, more established, uh, perhaps has worked hard and, you know, has a home and all these things. And, uh, you know, maybe he was older and she was young, maybe in her tw early 20s and or what have you. And, you know, maybe he was not able to perform his husbandly duties to her expectations and satisfaction. I don't know. I don't know. And then she says, oh, the heck with this. I'm going to get me somebody that's more able to perform the things that I enjoy pleasurably, right? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I have no idea if that's correct or not. But it is possible he was older and she got tired of not being fulfilled in her duties or his duties or whatever. So, so she plays like a whore and then she leaves and goes to her father's house and is there for four months. Probably playing around with some boys you know, boyfriends or whatever. Verse 3. And her husband arose. Ah, he calls, the Levite here is called a husband. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having a servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him and he abode with him three days so they did eat and drink and lodged there now remember bethlehem judah where was christ born bethlehem right verse five and it came to pass on the fourth day when they arose early in the morning that he rose up to depart the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread and afterward go your way and they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man arose to depart, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. You know, dad's probably hasn't seen daughter in a while, and, you know, wants to spend some time with daughter, right? And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure the father-in-law likes uh her husband you know hey you know family's here eat drink and be merry have some fun so eight and he rose arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart the damsel's father said comfort thine heart i pray thee and they tarried until afternoon and they did uh both and they did eat both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine with his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward evening. I pray you, tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here that thine heart may be merry, and tomorrow get you up early on your way that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night. So, you know, I guess he's, he's like, yeah, you know, it's been already, what, five days? We're going to leave. So, but the man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. Uh, so he's over, he's from Israel, but now he's in Judah. Jerusalem is, you know, capital uh, Judah. Different land areas. So he was a distance away. 
And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine was uh, also was with him. Now, there's a... Uh, let me stop here for a second before we read verse 11. Um, when a woman was defiled by going and playing with another man, uh, there was a thing where basically, well, she's defiled. And you're not supposed to touch her. You know, that's, you know, that was grounds for the divorce when she was playing around with another guy, you know. Um, so, you know, kind of keep that in mind. Uh, as far as I understand, he, the, the Levite, would not, by the law, would not be able to touch this woman anymore. But yet he's married to her as a concubine, you know, second wife or whatever. So he's somewhat obligated to her, but he has a right to divorce her. Matter of fact, uh, per the law, he could have her put to death because she played the whore. An adulterous woman was subject to the law to be uh, put to death. Think about that, people. So realize her life is on the line here. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Very important. So, and when they were by Jebus, the day was, uh, verse 11, and when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent, and the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into the city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. Uh, the Jebusites were one of those Canaanite tribes, the bad people. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside thither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. And he said unto his servant, Come and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. Benjamin is one of the tribes of Israel. Uh, actually, he belongs to Joseph. Oh, wait, no. No, I'm sorry. Uh, he was Joseph's younger brother. So, you know, Jim Benjamin is one of the tribes of Israel. Who is... Uh, some of the famous Benjamites in the Bible? King Saul was a Benjamite. Oh, yeah. Uh, Paul, the apostle in the New Testament, he was a Benjamite. Benjamin was a, an important tribe. So they were in Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at evening, at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gib Gibeah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? So, where are you going, and where do you come from? That's the Bob translation, right? Verse 18. And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim, from thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is... No man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. You know, don't live, out, don't live outside on the street. Uh, 
Those in the UK call it rough sleeping. You know, because you don't have a roof over your head. Verse 21. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet, and they did eat and drink. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, ooh, sons of Belial. What is what is that? What does Belial mean? What does that mean? Hmm. Let's take a look. Well, Webster's 1828 dictionary, uh, the guy that could speak 20 languages plus fluently, who was a believer, you know, uh, <laughs> I, the more I look at his 1828 dictionary, the more respect I have for it. Belial, noun, as a noun, it means unprofitableness, wickedness, as an adjective, worthless, wicked, in a collective sense, wicked men, evil people. That's what sons of Belial means. So let's go back. Judges 19, verse 22. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door. And spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. Ooh, what do you mean? Uh, well, you 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 want to get it, uh, introduce introduce yourselves to this guy? No, that's not what we're talking about. They want to know them. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Ah, uh, what a story does that remind you of? I know. There's a story in Genesis. You know where Lot was living? Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at Genesis 19 real quick. We're going to read the story of Sodom. And if I'm talking about those that practice that, I'm going to call them so dumb ites. So, uh, you know, so the you know who's don't uh, delete the study. Uh, Genesis 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Yeah, thank you for your offer, but no, we'll, we'll just sleep out here in the street. No problem. And he, Lot, pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and, they'd, and they did eat. So here it is, angels can eat, right? But before they lay down, mm, angels, I guess angels lay down. You know, I, do they sleep? I, I don't know, I guess. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed or surrounded the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Oh, yeah, they want to know them. They want to, uh, they want to know what they're... Uh, well, let's just say they want to play with them. And Lot, uh, 
And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Mm. I don't know if you've read this story, but uh, I guess we get to read this. Verse 8, And God forbid, Lot. He said, Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. They're under my protection. But God forbid we give our daughters, our virgin daughters, to a bunch of so dumb ites. Personally, I think uh, 12, you know, a 12 gauge. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, you want to you wanna play with a hole? I'll give you a hole to play with. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men, the angels, put forth their, their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. So here it is, these angels struck them with blindness you you want to be uh spiritually blind and do wickedness with the lord well you're spiritually blind well now you're physically blind too double blindness and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness both small and great so that they worried themselves to find the door Let's go back to Judges 19, verse 21. So he, the old man, uh, took the uh, Levite. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses. You know, he's feeding them straw, I guess, or hay or whatever. And they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city... You know, so dumb ites. Certain sons of Belial beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring forth the men that came into thine house that we may know them. Yeah, we want to know their uh, backside. Yeah, we want to know all about that. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. So remember, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't want to give him my daughter. I know that for a fact. But the concubine, she likes playing with men, right? She played the whore, right? Uh, she likes playing with guys. So I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm not saying it's right. But um, so here it is. He says, Behold, here's my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them will I bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. So the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto him, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. What did they do? Did they gang rape her? Did they uh, use the front entrance or did they use the rear entrance? Probably both. Who knows? Um, how many played with her? You know, there were um, the Japanese army in World War II would uh, take native 
women and um, turn them into comfort women. And some of those women said that they would have as many as 20 something soldiers in one night uh, that they would be held down to service. And I don't know if you know it, but uh, people can easily die from uh, anal sex, internal hemorrhaging and everything else. Uh, there was a couple of so dumb ites. I think it was in New Jersey at a sports stadium. Uh, it was a bathroom that was hardly ever used. Uh, there was a boy, he was probably 12, 13, something like that. And there was a pair of them. And one held the boy down and the other did him. And then they, I guess they took turns or whatever. And then they were caught in the act. But the boy died from internal injuries. And then at their trial, they were like, oh yeah, he he uh, saw what we were doing. And, the, and he wanted to join in too. Uh, I guess he couldn't handle it, you know, whatever. But the thing was, uh, they had proof that they were like kneeling on his arms because his arms had bad bruises. You could tell they had forced him. And then there was a couple of so, two so dumb ites in Australia that had adopted a, a boy. I don't remember how old he was. And he died of the same injuries. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and they took him away from Christian parents. Yeah. They took, took the boy away from his Christian parents and gave him to the you-know-whats. And, uh, and then Australia passed a law that you couldn't use the word... Um, Ped O file and so dumb ites in the same sentence. That was their uh, solution to that. You know, there's a reason why uh, the Lord said to do the solution that He did for that problem. Yeah, yeah, look at what King Josiah did. It's, it's vile. It's vile. It brings curses upon a land. Just the fact that the church is tolerating this evil and all these morons think that God's going to spare them for the, the curses that they've brought upon the nation. So... First, uh, Judges 19.25, But the men would not hearken to him, so the men took his concubine, you know, the whore, who was of no use to him anymore because she's defiled. And she likes playing with men, and I'm not saying this was the right thing to do. I'm not saying I agree, but I'm just pointing out what is. So he brought her uh, and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was, till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning, and opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman his concubine was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. So evidently she died. Uh, maybe from rectal bleeding or internal injuries. I don't know. So here it is. She died. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him unto his place. And when he was come into his place, he took a knife and laid hold on its concubine, and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces. He carved her up into twelve pieces. Why? Why twelve? 
So one for each tribe. And sent her into all the coasts of Israel. So here it is. He told the story. Look what these Benjamites did to my concubine. They raped her to death. So he chopped her up into 12 pieces and sent one piece to each of the heads of the 12 tribes, including uh, the head of Benjamin, I'm sure. Verse 30. And it was so that all that saw it said, you know, here it is when they get this body piece with the story. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. In other words, this was like one of the most, this was probably the most wicked thing that had been done up to that time. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Wow. Can you imagine that? Getting a note with a piece of this woman's body. This woman was raped to death by a bunch of so dumb ites who were Benjamites. Uh, what a what was the talk around the uh, water cooler with that one, huh? I think I'm going to make this a part one because uh, there's more to this story a lot more i mean i'm not saying i agree with what the guy did but uh you know he knew his concubine liked to play with men so but i you know i don't know not a good thing but the reason i bring this up was because i was uh listening to a channel the other couple days ago and they didn't explain the story at all. They just said the story and said, well, you know, unbelievers have got a good reason not to like the Bible because of this story. And I'm like, what? No, there's a reason why the, that they did this the way they did it. You know, the guy, uh, the, uh, the husband didn't want to get raped and he knew the woman liked to like to play around with men so i don't know killing two birds with one stone i suppose and like i say i'm not saying i agree with all this and i'm not saying i like it but uh yeah so all right so this is going to be part one all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.